Welcome back, everybody. I'm back today on the TRX. Um, we're finally going to do this inner chiller. Um, I got the kit right from uh, this Reaper Tune. I actually bought this for my blue truck like a year ago, and I'm finally, I'm glad I didn't put it on because um, I still have it. So here's the uh, three gallon um, reservoir. Uh, I got this. Uh, Looks like you could fill it up here without having to pull like crazy vacuum. I mean, they still recommend vacuum filling it, but at least you could fill it most of the way. <clears throat> um, this insulation came separate and it sticks on. So it's already pre-cut and everything and I already installed it, um, obviously. You got some uh, coolant hoses that are going to tap into your stock system. This is the inner chiller itself, which is going to get mounted in the grill. This is the uh, power supply to the race valve, which is in this box. So everything you need is in here for that. This is going to get attached to your stock setup. Over oh, already on it. I'll give you a couple of these AN fitting elbows. Uh, and a lot of insulation to wrap your um, coolant refrigerant hoses or lines, steel lines from sweating. And then there's a couple rubber AC hoses. This is the stuff I got to fill it. I already had somebody pull it down, so it's empty right now. I'm just going to put new stuff in it. It's just supposed to save time. Um, this uh, vacuum pump that we're going to use to pull system vacuum and aid in filling the system when we're done. Um, I do have a manifold gauge set here that is typically for R134A, but we are going to use it with these adapters so that I can use, put the 1234 um, YF back in it. Um, here's one connection. The other connection's right in the middle there. Um, let's see, right past the water pump, there's a blow a coolant hose over there. You'll see it better when, when I, uh, have everything hooked up, you'll see the yellow hose run to it. Um, and this, that was the reason why I put this catch can here, because it's out of the way, because the tank is going to get mounted right in this big open space. So... I was. I said when I put this uh, LED light in the grill that I was going to go over how to take the grill off. So that's going to be like the first thing. We got to get all this uh, front grill here and this stuff off out of the way so that we can mount. The first thing is this is going to get mounted. We're going to tap into the coolant hoses. I'm going to use a vacuum fill kit for that. I bought uh, <clears throat> five gallons of the Mopar coolant. I don't know that. Uh, I'm going to need all of it because I'm going to just, I'm going to pull it down or drain the system enough so that I can pull the hoses without it leaking all over the place and then just seal it back up right away. And then I'll top off this tank with the fill hole. I'll pull vacuum on it and top it off the rest of the way. So what we got is a whole bunch of push pins around here. In the instructions it says that you'll be swearing about it, but it's really easy. So the first thing, just get this cover off, this pops off, nothing. And then from here, you can pull all these clips out. I like to use this, I bought this clip tool, just kind of lift it up and get underneath it. And just pop it out. And like I said, there's multiple around this whole thing. So I'm going to take all these off, I'll remove this, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I got all the push pins out. There's, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 or 14. And then it just comes off. Now the next thing that's going to come out is this, like, Wow thing here, some 10 millimeter screws and a couple push pins on this. There are two push pins that are thicker than the rest. 
So you'll find that out if you go to, if you put the wrong ones in there, the smaller ones, and then you get this all on, and at the end you've got two big ones left, and you got to take the top thing back off and switch it back. So, um, yeah, so get these out. Okay, so I got all these screws out here on the front edge, and this piece just slides up as well. Okay, so now I have all the top drill bolts out, and if you lift it up, there's a little like detented sitting in here. It'll drop in. So the worst part, well, it seems like the worst part, are these parts right here. It seems like you're gonna break it, but there's screws behind there you gotta pull. You just grab it and pull it off. And then you have screws behind there. There's um, three on each side, 10 millimeters, and then this will come off. You do the same thing for the other side, obviously. Okay, so behind here, there's a screw here, and there's two there. And then on top, you have to unplug the camera. And I have that grill light here, so I can throw it over like this so it'll come out with it. <clears throat> but that should be it. Um, I took these screws out for these. Oh, there's also two screws for, for this piece here. So yeah, with the uh, screw there and there and there. You get these the little cooling vents out. So that should be all you got, and this thing should just come right out of here. So I lifted out of these little things here. They kind of snap in at the bottom a little bit. With a little bit of finesse. Okay, I know I stopped it, but there's a space between here. Between here and here, you just kind of got to wiggle it out from right there. There was nothing else holding it. All right, so now that uh, the actual inner chiller gets mounted in this area. So another thing to make it easier is you got to take this out. There's two 10 millimeter screws up there, one here, one here, and there's push pins that hold it into the side. But now that's all open. You gotta drill two holes in this bar here to mount it. And then from there, it's pretty much uh, adding hoses in the tank and stuff. So I don't know if I would say this is super hard. It's just a little tedious, but I mean, I wanna say probably 30 minutes. Now, you don't have to cut this piece out, but I did. I think it's gonna make it easier. These are the two holes you drill to mount the uh, inner chiller. They're four and point seven five inches apart. You center it by going off of this and measuring over. I measured over three and a half inches from here to, to get my starting point. So now I just gotta mount that. Now the instructions don't say it, but I'm assuming that this piece that went here no longer goes there because once I mount this, unless I cut around it, I see no way that that's gonna go back up. Okay, you have it mounted. Um, those nuts are a pain in the ass to get out. So I had to take a piece of tape and put it on the underside to hold the nut so I can get it underneath and get it up started. So I'm taking it that this was the hardest part. So the rest of the business is right in this area pretty much and the coolant hoses. So now we're going to move on to the coolant part. So this won't just spin off. There is a slot. Did you see that? That you need to line up. You can just take a zip tie, stick it in that slot, and then unscrew. And I got the zip tie back out and this just comes off. So this is where you, I'm going to end up hooking up my vacuum tool 
after I uh, drain it, and then I'm going so I can uh, fill it that way. Okay, so the next thing I decided to do was mount this box. I mean, there's really no need for a video for that. Um, there's a bolt here, factory bolt for this bracket for the uh, air cleaner, and then <clears throat> and. For whatever reasons, I'm not really sure if you have aftermarket air box, you won't, it won't matter. You can still use that bolt. Um, and then you're using the stock reservoir bolt here. So now you're, there's a fill spot right there on the top. And then you have one connection down here and one on top over there. So the line that I need to tap into is right there where the shiniest part of the light's on. It's going to get disconnected, and I believe the tank's going to fit in between. So I don't know. I might just uh, pinch the hoses off and disconnect it, and then just reconnect it, and then I'll just top off the system. Maybe I won't have to do anything. So, I mean, I'll still vacuum it, but it might be a lot less. Okay, so unknown to me until now, even after reading the instructions, I really didn't think about it, but... This is eliminating the heat exchanger, so you're completely bypassing it, so I, I think I'm going to take it out. <clears throat> but besides that, you got these hoses here, it comes with this uh, heat shrink clamp. This one is going to tie into the hose coming out of the pump, and then this, it comes out, goes in to this reservoir, and then comes out to that line there. I will go over that in a minute, but I was going to show how this um, how this clamp works. So basically, you want to take it, and push it down, kind of break it loose from the um, cardboard. You can kind of sneak a screwdriver in there, push it down on the inside, so you can get it loose there. And then push the cardboard out and now just don't forget that i mean it's not too late if you do it but put this on before you put the fitting on if you have a hose with two fittings so here's the 90 that's going to go on to that chiller now the hose they gave me i had to cut it because it was just a little too long <clears throat> and there was a short and a long hose. So, all you gotta do is heat it until it shrinks tight around there and then just let it sit and it's done. There isn't gonna be a lot of pressure on this setup anyway. They say you can't over shrink them. So this hose is on the back of the supercharger coming to the front and it's got a factory coupler right here. So we're going to take this hose, the coupler out of this hose and it's going to go right onto the tank. And then that same coupler that we remove, we're going to use down here and hook up the hose that comes off the pump straight into the in hose on uh, the chiller okay so i ended up taking it out and you see there's a lot of room now <coughs> i took off the uh air box so i could move the radiator back far enough to get the intercooler out so now so how you have it originally that hose connected to the top of that tank was going to the top line on the intercooler and then it came out and went to the water pump. So you had that line. This went to the top 
of the intercooler that hose was disconnected this hose as is is used for this connector now down here off the pump there's a short hose coming off the pump and you use the connector that you had up there for the upper hose this hose used to go to the lower part of the intercooler now it is used with that splice connection that you remove from the upper hose <clears throat> and then you use the uh, clamps and you go to the inside of the inner chiller then you come in out of here into the uh, reservoir tank so what I have to do now basically is fill like I can fill the coolant now or later but right now everything's sealed up um, put the air box back on and then hook up or uh, yeah get these connections for the AC done and then put it back together okay well I got uh, I did pull vacuum on the stock setup just to make sure everything was working um, I did have to do something with I could not use I had uh, some AC or 134 to our 1234YF adapter, but in here it's, it won't fit between that and the radiator, so I had to take the fitting off and put it directly on the blue hose. So I don't have an on-off valve at the fitting down there, but I do have one up here. <clears throat> so what's next is this line down here. All right, this is where the pressure sensor is located. I already removed it, okay? And then they give you a cap to put on that. So on these two sets, we are going to remove this lower line here. And this is gonna sandwich in between it. I already put the pressure sensor on this. So this is gonna bolt to that, and then that line that we take off is gonna go to here. And they give you a cap to put over where the pressure sensor used to be. Okay, so there it's mounted, and I found it was easier. I connected that line that goes into the bottom of it. It's not tight yet, but, I mean, it's so much easier to thread it in before you put that thing on. And they give you new seals for, <clears throat> for everything. So I removed the old one for that. It was a black one. And then now this line just goes right here onto this valve, and then they give you a, a new bolt. Okay, so I got everything on there. <clears throat> you got the pressure sensor here. They've got the original AC line reconnected to the Repatune valve. And then now we are doing this upper one. So I already pulled this off. And there is a block that goes there. I already oiled up that. And then there's going to be a hose go there. So I was wondering what it was for, and I found out right now. They give you this extension here that you thread onto this. So it comes out the other end of this. It looks like you are stacking everything together and tightening it all as one. So again, I just installed a new seal that they gave with it. You got to put it on here and just put the original nut back on. And then I can put the other hose that's connected to here, tighten it all up, and I'm ready to pull vacuum. I am going to pour a little bit of oil in the, in the one line. Uh, I need to add one ounce. All right, so uh, I'm not going to finish it tonight because um, <clears throat> I had uh, some issues with the connector that slowed me up a little bit. And I pulled vacuum, put oil and everything. Um, I filled up the coolant. What I did was I uh, threw there. It took almost three gallons. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, this bottom hose is connected, so it's probably full down here. I want to say that this... Even the stock reservoir is up a little bit. So I'm going to vacuum the rest tomorrow. And this way, I'm sitting here. 
on the vacuum. I got everything closed off, but it's still connected to the um, truck. So it's at a perfect vacuum. It's been like that for 45 minutes. I'm just going to leave it sit under a vacuum overnight. <clears throat> um, tomorrow, tomorrow I will just uh, finish the coolant first and then get the the ace. I got to run the power wire. This uh, this is for the race switch so that it cuts off the cabin AC for max cooling. I'm not sure how often I'm going to actually use that, but I just got to run it over to the aux switches. No big deal with that, but um, that's just something I got to do with two wires. So, but I run the wires, finish off the coolant, and then put the refrigerant in it. And then I'll do a whole nother video on the, um, <clears throat> how it's, how good it's working. So, uh, I might modify, I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to put this thing back in this thing, this one in the front here. I'll probably leave it out because if I put it back in, I'm going to have to cut it all up because there's no way it's going to fit with all this stuff here. So unless I just use the top half, I might do that. I don't know. The really only thing it's going to do for me now is hold the, um, hold this, which I don't think, I don't know. That's for the camera. So maybe we'll see. Uh, and no, and I got to hose this thing down. So once I get it started tomorrow and working, I'll leave all this shit off and I'm going to hose it down and get all the antifreeze out from the um, skid plate and there's some in, in the grill so until tomorrow for me to be overnight for you to be a split second okay it's tomorrow so um i went ahead and vacuum filled so we're right at the cold spot on the reservoir up there so basically you know you're gonna you set this tool up over here with that valve or with the cap off of that reservoir you're gonna hold that into the reservoir you're gonna hook your um air compressor to there's another part that connects here that that uh, has an exhaust pipe but you put it on there pull vacuum and then you'll open this valve and it'll start pulling vacuum and then when you're done you close it and then open this one and then it'll suck the coolant from this hose into the tank and the idea is when you're done that you won't have any air pockets but i think with this setup it's going to be pretty pretty easy to not have them so also this set overnight so we're still at 30 so i'm going to say it's good to go to fill it and we'll go from there so far i got about four ounces in by the pan I've only had it on for a couple minutes. Well, here we go with the uh, thermal camera. There's the uh, hoses. As you can see, it's definitely colder in there. I've only had it on for about two minutes. The connection's coming out of the supercharger, 68 degrees. 57 degrees there. And it's not even on the race valve. I don't even have it connected yet. See anything blue? It's the intercooler system. So I'm pretty good. Oh yeah. Okay, so the last step in this whole thing before you put it back together <coughs> is uh, anything that condensates, you're seeing to wrap it. And uh, they give you a whole, this big roll to do that. And they say to, you know, wrap it before, every time, every time. It's just a disaster. Um, gonna hook up that uh, race valve too in a little bit here and then I will do a whole nother video on the results but uh, yeah it's uh, 
working pretty good so I can't wait to see what it's like like when you block off the interior um, I did have to add Teflon to that because that was leaking like this drip and not a lot but and I'm just gonna keep an eye on this and see if that drops the level but yeah so I'm gonna move on with uh, wrapping this stuff up and we'll see about it when it's back together okay so finally I'm ready to put the grill and everything back on. Everything is wired up. Uh, <clears throat> he says the swear jar. I don't know. I think I might recommend uh, wrapping all these hoses first because it's just a little hard to do it when it's all in a tight spot. It looks like it would be easy, but, you know, there's some close spots where this stuff likes to stick to itself. So you kind of got to, you know, thread it through there without sticking it to itself. So what I did was I ran the, the wire, zip tied it to existing wire that's already here. And I will clean this up later because I keep adding stuff so I'm not concerned about it. But I grounded it here and I hooked it to the aux switch which is just the uh, pink with dark green wire, it's 20 amp. These are for the grill light, so it's ready to uh, be reassembled. All right, we're almost done here. Um, I had to do something because Reba got a hold of me. So down here, you see the AC line that is not wrapped. He said that's the hot line and to unwrap it, so that's what I did. So, with that being said, what did not go back in was these things here that basically attach to this, which is no longer going to fit because of the inner chiller. So that's not going back either. And really the only thing I need it for is that hole right there. And it mounts the camera connector. So I just zip tied it to this here. So I was able to at least, thank God, just loosen a couple things up with the grill. I pulled it forward to get my arm in there so I could uh, pull that insulation off. Also down there, as you can see, there's a little bit of grinding down there on the plastic. I did that just to give a little more space. Um, it was kind of hitting it. I couldn't drill the holes back any farther to mount the chiller back. So I just needed a little bit, not much. So these are the push pins for this piece I'm talking about. They're fatter and they're going to go here. If you don't put them here and you put them on the top or you, you put small ones in there, you're going to find out when you're done that you need to take this top piece off and get them out. Not a big deal, but why would you want to do it twice? All right, finally, all back. So I think um, the kit's pretty good. Um, everything is there that you need it's just that the instructions don't tell you everything so um, you just need to check that out like you're gonna have to text them or maybe I'm pretty sure I went over everything here though so um, as far as the refrigerant it takes 1.125 pounds which ends up being 19 ounces when you add the ounce that they want you to add from adding the um, inner chiller itself. So I used this scale when I was doing it and I just was, I weighed the bottle with the hoses and the valve all attached and I just went, it was exactly right because when I lost eight ounces of weight, the bottle was empty. So I had one with five in it and two full ones so i ended up with two ounces left in the end so um and the ac is super cold so that's working so what i have to do now is test the um race valve since that's hooked up and see how much colder it gets it and I, i'm assuming it's going to get even colder as you drive down the road because of the wind blowing on the evaporator on the condenser and uh you'll probably get colder than me just sitting here in the barn doing it but all in all, I, I like the kit. Seems to work pretty good for what was just sitting in here. And I didn't have anything wrapped yet. Everything is wrapped now. So it'll be interesting to see what changes are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it 
in my next video I'm gonna run it with it off and just see what regular driving does to the temps and then I'm gonna run it <clears throat> with it on obviously but I'm gonna use a draggy and I'm gonna run a eighth or a quarter or something and see how much of a difference it makes with it on or off. So run it, so it would give you an idea how it would run if you didn't have it or if you have it. So uh, hopefully you like what you see in this video and um, you hit the subscribe button. And I will be working on the CTSV, I think next week, putting that ice tank in there. So that's just gonna be a little more homemade, but the ice tank isn't, but the hose isn't how I'm gonna run it. So till next time. See you.